Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about TENS for pain relief during labor. Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Decker and I'm a nurse with my PhD and the founder of EvidenceBasedBirth.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about using TENS or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation for pain management during labor. So what is TENS? Well, TENS is a non-drug or non-pharmacological way to help manage pain. You can buy TENS units online or at a local drugstore. I picked this one up from the Walgreens down the street from me and it costs about $30. TENS consists of a handheld portable device that is connected to electrodes and the electrodes typically come on these pads. This is a small pad and this is an example of a larger pad still in their packaging and you would connect the unit to those electrodes either directly or sometimes they're connected by wires. You would then place these pads on the body. Through the electrodes, mild electric pulses are sent through the skin in the body to the person's spinal cord and brain. When you're using TENS, you might feel a buzzing, tingling, or prickling sensation wherever the pads are placed. It's easy to administer and the person who is receiving the TENS can control the intensity using the buttons on the device. TENS units have been used to relieve pain for a variety of conditions since the 1970s. So it's been used for menstrual cramps, arthritis, and several other chronic pain conditions. The FDA has actually approved TENS for use post-surgery and for traumatic pain. The history of using TENS for pain relief may date back to the year AD 63 when the Roman Emperor Claudius reported that he could relieve pain by standing on electrical fish at the seaside. When used for pain relief during labor, TENS is most frequently applied to the lower back on either side of the spine. Mothers can adjust the intensity of the TENS as needed during contractions. TENS can also be applied by trained specialists to acupuncture points. TENS can be used in combination with other non-drug methods of pain relief, except with water. You shouldn't be using it anywhere where there's water therapy involved. And it's also not supposed to be used together with heat. But anyways, you can use TENS in conjunction with other non-drug methods of comfort as well as drug methods. It can be stopped at any time and does not leave any residual effects. For example, you could stop it if you wanted to get into the tub or have a back massage. So how might TENS work to help manage pain? Well, researchers think that TENS might work by changing how a person perceives their pain. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you go back and watch our video all about the overview of pain management during labor. And we talk about the different ways that pain management techniques might work. When you use TENS at a low intensity level, it probably is working through something called the gate control theory. The gate control theory says that there's only a certain amount of stimuli that can get through to the brain. In other words, the gate only lets so much information through. So you're kind of flooding the brain with this sensory buzzing feeling from the TENS unit so the brain can't really perceive the labor contractions pain as much. However, if you are using high intensity TENS and you've really turned the intensity up, researchers think that works through a different method. The idea of this other method, which has a long name called diffuse noxious inhibitory control, well, the idea behind that method is that by stimulating the body with pain somewhere else other than your contractions, you trigger the body to release its own natural pain relieving hormones called endorphins. So in other words, you're creating a painful sensation to encourage your body to release those endorphins, which act kind of like your own morphine supply. Researchers also think that TENS might work during labor by decreasing anxiety, making you feel like you have more control over your labor, and by providing a distraction from labor contractions. So how common is the use of TENS during labor? 
Well, TENS first started being used during labor in the 1970s, but it started becoming more popular in the 1990s, and its use really varies by country. For example, in a 2009 survey of most birthing units in hospitals in England, they found that all 139 of those maternity care units supported and encouraged the use of TENS during labor. Only about one in five of the maternity care units had their own TENS units that patients could borrow during labor. The rest of them expected the consumer to come in with their own TENS unit to use. There are a variety of different types of TENS units available. Mothers typically report that they like the larger pads because labor pain is a little bit more spread out, especially if they need it on the back. Mothers also report that they like having a boost button that they can push during labor. So the TENS unit that I purchased does not have that button, but there are some on the market that do have a boost button. TENS can be purchased by consumers without a prescription. Like I said, I just went to my local drugstore and got one and can really be used without any special training other than reading the very long safety insert. However, there are options for doulas and other healthcare professionals to get formal training in how to use TENS safely and effectively. And I'll link to some of those trainings in the blog article for this video. In the research articles that I'm gonna talk about in just a minute, TENS was often applied to the lower back without any special training, but in some studies there was a trained acupuncturist who applied it to special acupuncture points. So what is the evidence on using TENS for pain relief during labor? Well, we found three systematic reviews of the research that were all published in the year 2011. And because they had similar findings and looked at similar studies, we're gonna look at the Cochrane Review from 2011. In this review, researchers combined 17 randomized controlled trials with about 1,500 participants total. The control groups varied between the studies. Some of them used routine care. Some of them used a placebo TENS where they applied it to the back but didn't turn it on or used an extremely low intensity. And some of them compared TENS to other methods of non-drug pain relief. Overall, 10 of the 17 trials were placebo controlled with a TENS unit that was either not turned on or had a very low electrical current. Unfortunately, some of the participants in the study might not have been truly blinded to what treatment they were receiving, the true treatment or the placebo, because it's possible that they may have realized that their TENS unit was not turned on. Overall, there was little difference in pain ratings between people who had TENS and people in the control group. However, people using TENS when it was applied to acupuncture points were less likely to rate their pain as severe. More people who were assigned to true TENS were likely to say that they wanted to use it in future labors and births compared to those in the placebo group. However, a surprising number of people in the placebo group also reported that they would like to use that treatment, not knowing that it was a placebo, in future labors. This suggests that simply having the TENS unit applied to you, whether or not it's turned on, may help by distracting you from labor and giving you a sense of control. There were three studies that looked at using TENS as an addition to an epidural. So people had an epidural and they were also randomly assigned to have TENS unit or not. And the researchers found that it did not provide any additional benefits to reducing pain level when you add TENS to an epidural. There were no bad outcomes or adverse events in any study. However, there may have been some skin irritation under some of the pads. There was one case in all of the studies where the TENS did interfere with electronic fetal monitoring, but that only happened with one patient. Since that 2011 review came out, there have been three more randomized controlled trials on this topic that were too new to be included in that review. In 2017, researchers from Iran reported the results of their randomized control trial where they assigned 90 first-time mothers to low-intensity TENS, placebo TENS where the device was turned off, or to routine care. They started the treatment on the back at about four centimeters and the treatment continued until the time of birth. After about one hour, the average pain scores were not different between the groups. However, they saw significant differences in pain levels at two, three, and four hours after the treatment began. 
For example, in the second stage of labor, so during the pushing phase, the people in the TENS group, only 20% of them reported their pain as severe, compared to about 83 to 87% of people in the other two groups reporting their pain as severe. When they asked people about four hours after the birth how they recalled the severity of their pain, only 7% of people in the TENS group recalled severe pain, compared with 43% of people in the placebo group and 60% of people in the standard care group. In another study published in 2016, researchers in Brazil randomly assigned 46 first-time mothers to either TENS or standard cares. They did not attempt to use a placebo. In the experimental group, once mothers reached four centimeters dilated, TENS was applied once to the back for 30 minutes. The intensity of the TENS was determined by the person who was laboring, so they got to choose how intense they wanted it. Before they started the intervention, about 70% of people in both groups reported that their pain was a seven or higher on the zero to 10 pain scale. But after the intervention occurred, only 34% of people in the TENS group said that their pain was a seven or higher, compared with 83% in the standard care group. On average, people who are randomly assigned to receive TENS ended up waiting about seven hours before they needed medications for pain relief, compared to two hours in the group that did not receive TENS. So TENS may have helped that one group postpone or delay their medication needs. They found no differences in reports of maternal satisfaction with TENS or no TENS. Finally, in 2013, researchers in Egypt assigned 100 people in active labor to either randomly receive low intensity TENS applied to the back or to receive pethidine or Demerol, which is an injectable narcotic. TENS was used in the experimental group until they reached 10 centimeters dilation. They found a decrease in pain scores in both groups, but there was no significant difference between the groups. 48 hours after the birth, the people who were randomly assigned to receive TENS were much more satisfied with their birth on average. 83% of them reported being satisfied, compared with 10% of those who received Demerol. People who received Demerol reported side effects such as drowsiness, nausea, and vomiting. Babies in the Demerol group also had lower APGAR scores after birth. There were no bad side effects reported in the TENS group. The results from this study are not surprising. If you look at our video about using IV opioids or injectable opioids during labor, Demerol is considered to be a not safe option because of its effects on babies and mothers in terms of their breathing. So in summary, there is a need for more high quality research on this topic. At least 11 randomized controlled trials have attempted to compare TENS to a placebo TENS where the device is either turned off or at a very low intensity. However, we're not quite sure if those researchers did a very good job of blinding or making sure that people who received the placebo were blinded to the fact that they were receiving a placebo. There is some evidence from the Cochrane Review and from the recent randomized control trials that using TENS during labor does decrease pain and may increase maternal satisfaction. Most people who use TENS say that they would use it again in a future labor. There was also one recent randomized controlled trial that found that the use of TENS delayed or postponed the use of medications for pain relief. TENS applied to the lower back during labor does seem to lower pain compared to placebo or routine care. One recent study that compared TENS to injectable opioids found that TENS relieved pain just as well as the injectable opioids, but without causing side effects for the mothers and babies. So far, researchers have not reported any adverse or bad side effects for TENS with mothers or babies. However, there has been limited research in that area. So the bottom line is that the available evidence that we do have does support the use of TENS for pain management during labor. Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to check out our other videos in our pain management series. And we also have a series all about natural labor induction methods. Thanks again. Bye. To learn more and subscribe to our newsletters for useful information, please visit evidencebasedbirth.com.